hello uh, I guess for today I have a uh, couple things in mind um, I made a list of uh, thoughts yesterday and I'm still in the progress of uh, creating a bad explanation about them and uh, I'm currently on Skype now and uh, I don't have a, uh, a clear vision in my mind but I can remember from the top of my mind uh, some of these things and I can just go here and open the notepad anyway so there is one thing that uh, I haven't take, uh, taken note yesterday and it's this idea that uh, what makes something uh, that you do uh, intensive um, like what makes uh, the intention, what prints the intention, intention in something that you do if not the knowledge of, uh, of the implications of that and uh, of the model um, of the system in which that action is taking place so basically I want to make a simple relation um, of knowledge and intention in order to have a intention um, you need to have knowledge and uh, if your brain is able, if your mind is able to have more knowledge when making decisions uh, it can uh, necessarily it has to have more intention So, uh, I believe that uh, when the Greeks, when the ancient Greeks talked about uh, the strength of the spirit, they could be talking about the strength of the mind, and they would uh, be thinking about uh, things like this. They would be thinking um, that a mind that is able to to generate a lot of knowledge when making any kind of action is able is able to achieve uh, complex goals and in a big scale this implies that a population of the same uh, characteristics of, same, of the same mental characteristics like the population with a strong spirit is also able to make big civilizations I'm looking for the text file now I won't stop talking I can just, uh, I don't know, I can make a comment on something that uh, a friend of mine talked, uh, reported as he went through probably his fifth session of uh, transdermal direct current stimulation, which is also known by TDCS. And uh, he mentioned that he's now able to feel that uh, things in his mind are clearer and uh, he seems to, to think that uh, the quality of his thoughts and let me see, let me see, I want to quote him exactly on what he said um, the freshness and clearness is improved but uh, neither speed nor quality seems to differ yeah um, probably uh, he's unable to measure the speed of his thoughts and he's unable to, to make that conclusion and quality uh, is not expected to improve within like four days span I would say that quality of thought <laughs> is probably due to a lifetime of uh, data acquisition and uh, you know in order to have really deep conclusions you need to be considering all the cases in which your ideas could fail uh, so okay I found the file I can now just jump into it um, I was thinking of talking about um, the introduction of, of short-term concepts that are in conflict with uh, with ideas that you have and talk about. For example, imagine that I use the word ideology with a bad connotation, and then someone uh, who prefers to use that word when they are talking about uh, general ideas that can be applied to um, like I ideologies are are general ideas, general worldviews, like it's not necessarily a bad thing, necessarily a bad thing and suppose that I'm someone who has the relation in my mind that ideology is bad and you introduce the, the subject with, uh, with a neutral tone and uh, I keep thinking about uh, ideology, the idea that ideology is bad even though I'm trying to to get a grasp of a new definition of that word and 
it seems to be like like something uh, imagine that uh, probably your your mind is is conditioned to to think like that and i think this condition comes in waves so the part of the mind that uh, retains new ideas probably oscillates with the old part and this make really it just makes a lot of sense because if you have a new idea you want to check with facts and facts are old knowledge right and uh, even if you want to check if you want to check with new facts new like scientific facts you need to know from old knowledge how to um, test this uh, by old knowledge I could be talking about uh, your old ideas of physics of chemistry chemistry and uh, maybe you don't know the specific facts to test your hypothesis but uh, you could be able to think of how to test this and uh, it makes sense to think that uh, the new knowledge acquisition part oscillates uh, opposite to the old knowledge part and if this happens in a in a bad way i believe that people are unable to convince one another without repetition i think that the idea here is that eventually uh, you will need repetition in order to um, get through a very uh, dense school right thick school that thick school and I don't think that people can really, um, even when they want to, can really believe in things. Uh, think about how you determine if uh, if a word is spelled some way or if a sentence is common. Uh, by determining that, you are actually comparing with uh, alternatives and these alternatives just feel bad, just make you feel bad. And you make the decision of how to say it and what to say uh, by this uh, instinctive instinctive feeling right okay so the idea of this talk is to not go into depth uh, too, too much depth within a subject and uh, move on to the next one and the next one is uh, to talk about uh, why Socrates wasn't uh, writing his ideas and his excuse for that was that he believed that once you've written something you are allowed to forget it. Now, I want to make it clear that uh, I don't, um, I don't think Socrates is uh, is perfect, and not even Socrates thought of himself as perfect. In fact, he would like to emphasize the imperfect side, especially of his intellect. And one of his weird habits was to never take a shower and to sleep with the same clothes he he was wearing uh, the whole day, and. Uh, from what I've seen in a statue that's supposedly Socrates, he, he was fat. And uh, I've seen some description of uh, Socrates as a uh, crazy-eyed uh, fat man and very ugly. Like, uh, I think the Greeks were very uh, focused on the beauty in general and uh, maybe that's a bad thing. And uh, maybe Socrates was like somewhat big or something, and he was disgusting. I don't know what do they mean by ugly, but uh, certainly not aesthetic, if that's the, the focus here. And considering that, <coughs> maybe maybe it's because Socrates wasn't um, a man with discipline. Now I think that's a very sound argument because maybe that's the reason. Uh, maybe that's the reason why he wouldn't write. Okay, because it doesn't make sense to not it doesn't make sense to avoid writing eventually you're going to need to write in order to to find new conclusions uh, maybe Socrates did write but he wasn't writing uh, for later use he was probably writing for short-term use uh, maybe he was writing in a very informal way I don't know but uh, suppose that uh, if Plato were to f really uh, follow so Socrates on that regard, Plato wouldn't uh, have written about Socrates, and I wouldn't be talking about him now, because of the lack of literature on Socrates. So this position is very, very weird to maintain. Uh, writing certainly a very good habit in my mind, and uh, I think you can really, really practice memory with writing, uh, because you can. You can see if you're remembering stuff, right? You don't have to rely on other people. You write something, and then you try to remember it, and then you check if you have remembered it. Um, I have an idea about uh, 
Okay, so the next topic is uh, let me see. Wow, I think I I've, I've written a lot of stuff here. Um, I want you to talk about this a possible relation between asceticism and materialism. We used to think of those as opposite terms, but uh, uh, I don't think they're opposed. I think, in fact, that uh, materialism happens due to uh, the lack of uh, a pursuit of happiness, and the lack, and by the lack of pursuit of happiness, I understand that to be laziness, and I understand that. What happens here in materialism is that the mind eventually thinks that uh, it's as happy as it could ever be in a certain moment, for example. And uh, since this idea can be conditioned within the brain, um, and it doesn't make sense, logically it doesn't make sense, right? Um, why would it be that uh, you get as happy as possible in a moment? It, it doesn't go with uh, the principle of eudaimonia from uh, classic Greek. Um, but suppose that was the case, the case of a mind. This mind is thinking that uh, it's as, as happy as possible. And uh, the idea that I'm about to introduce here is that uh, no matter how happy you are, you could always be happier. How about that? Uh, is there a limit to how many uh, sensors you have for happiness or whatever system that is? I, I think that the whole idea of happiness is that uh, since it's a scale, it's a an idea of uh, zero to infinity, in my mind. And uh, I would argue that uh, you can't go maybe maybe uh, maybe not even zero to infinity, maybe minus infinity to infinity, but uh, uh, that would be um, solved solved in a later talk because <laughs> it would get a little complex right so anyway i do think that uh, you could always be happier and uh, asceticism is in a very um interesting way a self-denial of happiness and i don't think that you can believe in uh, suppose that this asceticism is from religion right i don't think that you can be uh, consistent with your religion and be an ascetic. So I think that asceticism is a sign of uh, the generation within the religion. And I can actually mention a religion that didn't have asceticism but had major philosophical aspects and uh, probably in a very, uh, in a much more um, posit positive way for society. And that religion is Zoroastrianism. And uh, from what I remember about Zoroastrianism, um, uh, let me see if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Anyway, from what I remember about it, um, you were not allowed to to be a monk. You had to help people, and that's the main part of your religion. And if you think about it, and uh, you consider, for example, the first, the two main commandments um, that uh, Christians should theoretically follow, and uh, the second one is about charity. And the first one is about uh, is against materialism. It's against the idea that uh, there is an amount of happiness that you achieved, and uh, and there is no more to be achieved from that. The first idea, the first commandment, is a an invitation to infinity, in a way. And the second one is about charity, and there is no mention about asceticism. Asceticism is certainly something wrong in my mind, and. Uh, I understand that that's probably a better way to explain this for people with uh, static tendencies. <sighs> okay, let's look it up. Zoroastrianism. Maybe I'm... Ah, oh, Zoroastrianism. And the uh, prophet is called Zoroaster. Uh Natively, it's known as Mazda Yasna. And uh, it's very interesting. I not go... Uh, I'm not going in this stuff right now. I just mentioned it. So that's my argument for um, for spiritualism and uh, and uh, let me see and the pursuit of happiness, uh, spiritualism and pursuit of happiness instead of asceticism and materialism. I want to make a, an argument against uh, the idea that you are born without a conscience and then you receive a conscience around the age of three or four, and, th and those are the first days that you remember from today, um, I could argue that that's not a uh, that's not deductive reasoning. I can 
like argue really fast about this. That's not deductive reasoning. You you spend your day and you know you're conscious your whole day, and you know that from deductive reasoning actually, and uh, you understand that you are you are conscious, but you're not remembering your whole day. And uh, if you can actually do a very fast test about that, you can try for a minute to uh, generate a sequence of uh, digits like um, numbers and uh, and maybe something that uh, if if you're not uh, so familiar with this idea maybe something easier like a uh, generate words and then you should be able to notice that uh, even within a minute and by reading each word and you know that you're conscious why read that uh, why read those um, you're not able to remember and uh, it's just gone man it's n there's no data about it and uh, you can like uh, make an effort to remember more words but uh, the idea here is that you're going to waste more time trying to remember those words than actually uh, reading and looking at those words okay so the idea that you are not uh, you're not conscious when you're bored is from simple deductive reasoning wrong right uh, it's very safe to assume that uh, you were learning by that age and uh, the most likely scenario is that uh, the, the learning was so deep that uh, you were actually learning by by making whole areas of your brain in a certain way and uh, your brain is able to judge that uh, whenever whatever you were you were hearing when you were born um, whatever you are hearing when you have a small baby brain can be just uh, deleted maybe that's it right um, you have a small brain why would you uh, with all those priorities um, keep all that data since uh, you can't even process it yet and uh, there's plenty of time for processing so I I would uh, really believe that uh, your mind is just deleting those uh, those datas those uh, those uh, I don't know. I don't know how how memory sort, but uh, I, I'm going to say those bits, okay? Because um, it seems right. <laughs> it seems closer to computation. All right. So there's also another thing that uh, I like to talk about. Some people think that the right way to think about yourself is from a third person view, and uh, the third person view is something that was probably introduced around the time that uh, uh, Locke and Newton were creating that w that what uh, is known as materialism and positivism today and uh, maybe they did it by accident doesn't matter the thing here is that you have to realize that uh, you're using your imagination from a first person view when you are at it you're not actually seeing yourself from a third person view you're always from the first person view um, and I guess I'm, I'm not going deep into this because if uh, if people don't know what I'm talking about, it's uh, it's not really that important. Um, I'd also like to say that maybe the modern language has uh, doesn't have enough words. Like for example, some words are clearly defined in a subjective perspective, right? And uh, that uh, that seems to be. Uh, to be easily forgotten by people who are very uh, unable to understand you. And I catch myself doing that, but uh, it's very sad and I don't like to think about it. But uh, the idea that you can't um, communicate with other people without uh, first defining a bunch of words is very uh, maybe scary, I don't know. I would say that it's important to to make a conclusion when uh, everyone else is able to understand the same words and it's it's important to create a context in which you can speak and people will follow the meaning the meanings of the words from the context uh, a context is very is very uh, useful to create meaning by the way um, without context you are very likely to think of words as uh, as you like or as you are used to Okay, so maybe maybe it's time to stop, right?